Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are and whatever time it is, I hope you are having a good one. Welcome back to House Flipper 2 with Rash Decision. If you enjoy this type of content, please leave me a like, subscribe, and maybe even a comment to let me know. Enjoy the video. And welcome back. It's Mod Review Monday, my dudes. Uh, we have another one here. This one uh, caught my attention as soon as I saw it. Uh, this one is an ode to Tudor. Tudor, Tudor, however you want to say it. Uh, there's a few different ways to say it, depending on what part of England you hear it from. <laughs> wow, excuse me. This one is also by Sarah, who did uh, the previous uh, job down here, the Glashmar uh, Marsh Chove, uh, Cove job, and that was the one with all the, uh, the vandalism and the really nice beach house. Uh, there was a few problems with that one, but it was very, very high quality. So I'm extremely excited to see this one to see what kind of quality it is and how uh, how it was put together because I'm seeing the outside it's pretty spot on. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into it before I talk too much about it right here. I don't believe there's a job associated with this one. I believe this one is just the property. Oh wow, why am I why am I here? A little bit strange, but that's okay. Uh, I guess we'll start inside. There might be something wrong with the way the uh, character is uh, generated in this world, in this, uh, I started to say world, in this map. Um, you know what? Starting right off really strong. I, I love, uh, again, I, I said this on the last of uh, Sarah's maps in the Glasgow uh, Cove job. Uh, I love this idea. This idea of having just like this, uh, this bench next to a window. I love that idea. It's absolutely incredible. So the one thing about uh, Tudor... Um, or really anything from this era, even all the way up to parts, I'm going to say parts, of Queen Anne and Victorian style, is this half plaster. Or officially it's referred to as half timber, but it might as well be half plaster, because the plaster is the primary portion of it. But um, what you would do is you would take these uh, timber uh, posts, these four by four timbers and you would use them to frame out the uh, primary wall. And then in between, depending on how far back you go, the, the development method changes. You would use in the older methods, you would use just like a mat made of like reed. Um, that's kind of uh, weaved together. And you'd use that as a primary mat to apply uh, a clay mud to. And then you would let the clay harden and you, you would use like uh, straw and things like that to uh, act as uh, the fibrous uh, com combination there. Um, you find that in a lot of old uh, brick making too. You would use clay brick that's reinforced with straw. And it actually makes this crazy strong material for how simple it is to actually make. And I'm not going to say it's like modern brick or anything like that. But for the time, it was a very, very high quality material, uh, very expensive too. So usually you would see most families going with this half timber style rather than doing brick. And it, uh, this half timber style made a lot of sense in the context because it was naturally cooled. It, was, it would naturally retain heat in the uh, winter. Because it was white, uh, and some in some places you would actually find where the plaster ended up being white like this. I think the more modern version of the plaster actually was more like a modern plaster. It didn't use uh, uh, like clay mud or anything like that. It actually was like more of like a modern plaster. And because it dried white naturally, or maybe you could whitewash it with some other material later... Um, of course, you know, it stayed very cool in the summer, stayed warm in the winter, uh, it wasn't flammable, so it, it would be very resistant to burning, but there's also the fact that there is a lot of timber to it, so I'm sure you've heard of, like, the Great London Fire. Is that what they're re referencing in that picture? That that would actually be kind of ironic that I'm standing here staring at it, but I'm sure you've heard of, like, the Great London, London Fire. Ooh, I like this tub kind of catty-cornered and got, like, the, the sunroof right there. That's more of a modern thing. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of uh, a lot of architecture that's gone into this uh, into this house. I see a couple things that could be modified, like the the width of this room is a little bit strange for how this is coming out, but it's still wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Once again, it seems like this is going to be a situation where I'm going to have a lot to say of things that I would have done different personally, but are not being done incorrectly at all. This is wonderful work. I. 
again, like I saw the uh, the 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 effort that was being put into the Glasgow job um, previously by Sarah. And, uh, and I apologize, I forget your specific username on the site. Uh, I don't know why mod.io, and by the way, I did actually finally get mod.io to uh, play nice with uh, House Flipper for me. Previously, I was having such a hard time getting House Flipper to uh, actually hook in, to actually get the webhook working with... Uh, with mod.io i couldn't get it to actually work that's a very narrow space right there it's definitely intended that you're supposed to walk through it this way and this sink is a little bit strange i'm not quite sure what that sink is trying to do uh where's the fridge this is a very odd way to do a kitchen but i understand it i understand why it was done this way this is actually okay there's a dishwasher where's the fridge I'm trying to listen for it, I apologize. I don't see a fridge here. A fridge would be pretty easy to spot because it's like the size of this, but it has like one door. And I can hear one. But I don't see one. But anyway, I finally got uh, mod.io to actually work properly with my uh, with the game. So I'm actually so instead of having to load everything manually now, I'm actually able to just open up the uh, the modules in game and kind of pick through them what I'd like to do. So I don't actually see the the site anymore, which is a little bit odd. I don't know why they use different usernames on the site versus the in game browser. It's I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> it, they, they do the same thing for a couple of other games that I uh, load mods for, particularly for uh, SnowRunner. I made mods for SnowRunner, and it shows differently in uh, the mod manager versus the mod browser. I, I don't know. I like this re recessed wall. I feel like there could have been a little bit more done with it. But for all intents and purposes, it is a very nice structure. It has this wonderful little arch. I feel like there's something missing right here. Like just anything. Like even like a little statuette. It would and just anything right there to break up that big open space would be perfect. Because you've got great balance up here. <clears throat> you have the light over here that kind of lights it up and makes it look a little bit lighter. That's a, a somewhat of a joke. Uh, when you balance for dark and light, uh, you want darker colors to be offset by lighter colors, and using actual light, like candlelight like this, makes colors appear lighter. And you see like the, the, the flame bouncing off this uh, dark vase right here? That makes that vase look physically lighter than it actually is. So it kind of helps balance out these colors on this, uh, on this uh, shelf, and I do like the way that this is balanced. Uh, not sure about the plants. I feel like the plants would probably die up there. Like, unless some really hardcore light starts streaming in through this window at some point. Got, like, the little radiator right there. It's a good place for a radiator, actually. I like that. Got the computer all set up for the desk. And I do love this little space right here. The only thing that's really missing is just putting, like, some books up here. So that you can read them on your nice little, uh... Nice little uh, love seat here. Have the ottoman kick your feet up on. Okay. Oh, hiding behind the door. I do like, I do like the fact that the lamps all match. But to be honest with you, the way I would have done this differently is actually putting these wall lamps. Like kind of over top of the uh, the bed and putting something in the center that maybe even matched uh, what would go out here, so there would be like that uh, that cohesion going across. But otherwise, this is a very nice room. It has a lot of three dimensional elements that make you feel like uh, you're in a bigger room than you are. Interesting choice uh, going with the ceramic tile in here. Um, 
honestly, like, there's not a problem with it, especially in a more modern house like this. Uh, and to be honest, I'm not sure that there's really a better way to do this. Like, these concrete, or actually, no, these might be raw stone. Using the raw stone on the walls would have been my choice than using, like, white uh, ceramic on the floor. Because the wall was the first thing that I saw when I came in. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of judged the room for what it was as soon as I saw that wall. But otherwise, but I mean, it, again, it's fine. <laughs> it's just something that I would have done differently. Because uh, realistically, like having the dark color that has like this white grout to it kind of continues the same design aesthetic that's out here, just in a more interesting pattern. It, the fact that it's all structured and it, it doesn't have varying widths, um, honestly kind of lends it an appeal of its own. It really does. Let's see, I'm guessing this is just a little closet. Absolutely lovely little uh, little walk-in closet. What is that? What is that? Huh? I want to look into that. That's uh, it's a little bit strange there, but anyway. Yeah, lovely little walk-in closet. Have a have a wardrobe, have your have yourself a nice little bench to sit down on. Uh, probably put some shoes down in here, sit down on the bench, change your shoes. Absolutely. I see nothing wrong in here, real, uh, realistically. Everything is put together in a really high degree of uh, competence, I guess is the best way to put it. So as I was looking around here, what I was saying that uh, I see the reason for doing a kitchen this way, um, it's because it's out in the center of the room. Because of the way this wall is shaped, and it uh, has the stairway going down through here, it would have been fine to put a uh, kitchen here, but this does add a significant amount more intrigue to the room, as well as the fact that you have this lovely little uh, mat that goes along the back of it. Um, the only problem I have with it is that it makes it a little bit less useful. Uh, I've said it before, but the way that kitchens are designed in modern houses is you have a triangle. And I was looking for the fridge because I'm not quite sure where the fridge is or where it was meant to be. I should hope it should be like one of those or one of the, or like right here. But uh, you would draw a triangle between your three uh workstations and that's going to be your sink your fridge where like right here right there and your uh stove and anything that gets in the middle of that uh workspace is going to cause uh slowdowns in what you're able to do and how quickly or efficiently you're able to move uh as someone who likes to cook myself i understand the value of having a excellently designed workspace and work triangle and as well because i work with uh uh, because I worked with uh, the company for so long that uh, uh, where I had a, speciali a specialty in cabinet design software, uh, under uh, seeing something like this, that software probably would have yelled at me or whoever designed uh, something like this. It is an absolutely crazy idea, and the chaos of the idea gives me life. Do not misunderstand me. I love this idea but I need to see it refined. If it had just been a proper island where all of the workspaces were like back here, like you had the sink like kind of turned around over here. You know what, I'm actually gonna do it. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and do it. Uh, kind of turn this around. Oh, it's not gonna let me do that. There must be something that thing is hiding. But anyway, um, uh oh. Oh no, don't have it placed on the, okay, uh, there we go. I see the problem. I see how, okay, yeah. That was my fault, I'm dumb. But yeah, just having all of your workspaces on the other side there, right there along this corridor, would realistically elevate this kitchen to another level. And make it work a lot better in the context you're trying to make it work in. And then of course have like replace this with a fridge. Or maybe like this one right here. Or even better kind of kick these over. 
have this over here, and then replace this one on the end with a fridge. Actually, you know what? Since I can, I'm going to go ahead and just do it. It's just so I can show you what I mean. I'm going to kick these over. That won't be where they stay. I'm just kind of getting them out of the way so I can put this in. Let's see. I believe that's that's not going to be Crane. I've used Crane several times in some of the more country houses, so I'm very familiar with what it looks like. I believe that's this. No, 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 that's not right. See, there's Crane, but it has that little uh, arch at the top. That looks right. Wait, no, that's that's a bathroom sink. Never mind. Let's do this. Standing cabinets. Uh, functional cabinets, because I need a fridge. It's not Brooks. There it is. So there we go. So if I take this and I put it like here, I'm going to copy... Copy style. There we go. And I'm also going to modify style so it goes to the right. There we go. Now we got the fridge over here on the end, we have the, the sink in the middle, and we have the stove over here. We have plenty of prepar uh, preparation space here. And then on the other side, uh, we just have drawers, cabinets, drawers, cabinets, drawer, drawer. So we have plenty of storage space for food. So I would use this as kind of like a living pantry, and then use the other side as your actual kitchen. And this would be an excellent kitchen to use. Uh, because even though I don't like corridor kitchens, and I've said that multiple times in the past, this technically wouldn't be a corridor kitchen. This would actually become more of like a private kitchen. And the reason is when you're working back here, uh, you can have your private little work triangle right here. And when someone comes in, they don't have to go through your work triangle. They have a way around it. Oh, I see the fridge. I'm dumb. I didn't even see that because it was white. Yeah, I would not do that. Uh, let's actually go ahead and just sell that. Because that's why I was hearing it. Because I'm looking all over here and it was right behind me. I'm sorry. Listen, I'm so sorry. That was my fault. I didn't see it there. But anyway, yeah, having it, just taking it out of there, kind of putting it into the end here. Uh, yeah, someone can just come in and go around this way instead. And if you need uh, storage space for food, like pantry, that sort of thing, or extra silverware, this is lots of storage space for all of that sort of thing. And it, this would actually work very well. This is a crazy-ass idea, and I love it. We just have to make the improvements that need to be made to make it a functional, usable kitchen. That's all we have to do. So coming around, uh, I did kind of turn this light on, and I had a look in here uh, previously, and I like this design. I like where you have this big open window, uh, kind of like as the centerpiece of this room. And then it still has like the functionality of, and I love this chair. I, I want to, I wanted to use this chair in my office in the PC home, but I wasn't able to. And I, I am so sad because I love this chair. I love the design of it. I love how regal and yet how simple it is. I, I can't get enough of the, the, the this style of chair. So I 100% agree with your choice in furniture, and I'm probably biased on it, but I do love this furniture set. It works so well in this context. And then of course you have like the little table and chairs over here, which is kind of standard. Uh, I do like the fact that you use the country cross uh, chairs uh, because it does match a lot of the same uh, design uh, language that you see in half timber houses uh, because you do see like the uh, uh, I can't even think of the word for it off the top of my head see there it is but either way so that takes care of everything inside that I remember uh, there wasn't anything upstairs like the one thing upstairs that I kind of uh, thought was very interesting is how this center area has this massive view of the downstairs. And then you have this massive, 
big bedroom in here and this massive big bathroom in here. This right here is a little bit strange, but I can get it because this is meant to be uh, two-door style, not ex uh, explicitly two-door. Tudor, two-door, two... two uh, something, something War of the Roses. I don't care anymore. Let's have a look outside. Oh, yes! Got the, uh, the flat river stone as flagstone for building. That's actually an excellent touch because trying to use like the uh, the large cobblestone or the small cobblestone, that's not correct. Not for uh, this particular style. Uh, that would be correct for uh, a little bit later and would also be correct for buildings in like Ireland and Scotland where a lot of that stone type is very easy to come by. But this type of stone where it's kind of... Uh, that slate or maybe even limestone or a couple of other different kinds of uh, stone where it's kind of chipped off and it was uh, ran through the river uh, for a couple of months before it was used. Um, yeah, this is absolutely the kind, of, uh, the kind of stone you would see used in this kind of situation. Um, I see a lot of uh, modern influence in this, like the black. Uh, black was very rare during that period and a lot of times in order to achieve it especially on wood you would actually char the wood uh, which would leave a lot of the wood grain poking through rather than uh, just be pure black I, it's one of those it's one of those things that i appreciate the hustle it brings a very modern vibe and it, and it doesn't it doesn't offend me too awful bad that it's here I'm, honestly, it doesn't offend me at all, really. It's actually a very cool addition. And of course you have the uh, the elevation difference. This is exactly how you would see houses like this, especially of this size, uh, be portrayed. They would have like this little elevation difference from the rest of the area around them. And you would shore up that difference to make the house look bigger, more fancier. Because usually when you're talking about a Tudor house, you're not talking about like a big wealthy nobleman that's making it necessarily. It's usually going to be uh, this style because it was so inexpensive to make. This style would be more uh, your middleman. Like uh, just mi lower middle class, that kind of thing. And then the more expensive materials would go to uh, higher classes. Or you would see those higher classes making larger versions of the lower class structures. So they would fit in with like uh, uh, neighborhoods uh, or villages that had lots of houses like these. They would just make larger versions of them. And the way to make them seem larger than they actually are very cheaply is to use the earth to your advantage like this. So everything I see, I have not had, I've not really had much to say. Like, I'm looking at my time taken on this episode. It is very short compared to usual. This is absolutely a wonderful little house. I highly recommend. Go in here, grab it. You know what? I would love to see, like, just a remix of this house. Because uh, there is, like, a lot of... Uh, a lot of features to this house that could uh, be modernized very seamlessly. So I'd love to see a remix of this house that is just purely modern. Just modernized uh, two-door architecture. And I do have to say, I really respect that the uh, the lip is actually here. That's something that I've actually been worried about, is the lip being missing from a few uh, from houses that are trying to be built in this style. And the lip actually has to do with how the uh, base floor is built. Because it's built out of stone, you want it to be a little bit smaller. And then that kick out is actually just the ability of the wood and plaster uh, to make a larger space out of a smaller one. So it's really just material efficiency when you see this. Uh, and then the style kind of caught on and it became more of a style than it became like a material choice. But anyway. That's going to be it for this one. This one was absolutely awesome. Uh, I 
love everything about it. There's a few different problems, like here and there. There's a little bit with the kitchen that can be changed, like I showed you. Uh, there was a few things here and there that were done extremely well. There were some things uh, may want to take a second pass on just to double check them. Uh, but uh, all in all, absolutely recommend go get it. Have a look at it for yourself. See if you can do a remix on it. Uh, take this style and uh, really take it out of space. I'd love to see it. Have a good one, my dudes. Cheers.